Okay, uh, doing a quick demo over here of this uh, particular glass. What I would say is, again, my feeling is I always like to work from the top down, uh, left to right, just so my hand doesn't drag over the paper. Now, the background of this thing is not completely jet black. Um, it really has like a little bit of a, a dark gray to it. Uh, so what I would start doing is I would work from that top corner over here, and I would try to get a little bit of light, light value in there. And you might be able to achieve this just with some of the white charcoal that's on a blending stump, but since I don't really do any blending yet today, I don't really have any white charcoal on a blending stump. So again, I'm shading left to right, uh, side to side here. But when I start blending, I try to blend in all different directions. And if you shade left to right and then blend up and down, um, you'll find that it kind of smoothens out the charcoal a lot more and, and gets rid of some of your sort of mark making, which is good. From there, what I'm going to do, I mean, for the glass itself, um, you know, we have some, I wouldn't call them outlines, but we have certainly some sort of pronounced edges. And the first one would be up here, the top of the actual rim of the glass. So what I would do is I would go ahead and go in a way, outline it. Come in there, sort of smudge that little outline into the picture. And then I would kind of look for my little opportunities to pick up some slight little reflections. And, you know, it's sort of a little bit irregular. There are some spots because of the cut of the glass where you pick up just a little bit more. And other parts that maybe just be a little bit uh, darker or even appear to be just a little bit thicker. I'm going to go ahead and pick up a couple of those little highlights as I see them. I'm going to start over here on this side. Uh, my edge, that very edge of the glass, sort of stands out to me uh, a little bit because it has a white reflection on it. Not the brightest of the white reflections that I have, not through all of it, but I want to kind of find that edge. Blend it in ever so slightly. I'm blending with the same direction over here because I don't want to smudge it out too much. I want to kind of keep the crispness of the line. I'm just going to kind of go ahead. I'm going to start with a little bit of lighter gray stuff just to set up what I want to do on top of it. I'm going to get a couple little highlights and stuff in there. Uh, but underneath those highlights, it isn't jet black either. So to kind of get the base layer of this down, what I'm going to do is put down a little bit of white. And again, I'm not going to work box to box. I'm just going to kind of work section to section here a little bit. And it's okay since a lot of that is um, relatively streaky. I'm going to make my marks a little streaky. So right over here, I'm going to blend it over up and down. And then you kind of smooth it into the paper a little bit just to give it a little bit of some light gray because underneath a lot of those little streaks and stuff that I'm about to add, there is a lot of light gray in there. So I'm going to go ahead and get a little bit of that. And that would be like my base already for this. And then I'm going to come back and really just look for those high points. Some of them I'm pressing down a little bit harder on. Others I'm a little bit less. One kind of
I don't want to spots that are supposed to be very very bright I don't want to over blend them necessarily copying every mark I see exactly perfect but I'm using what's on the picture as a reference to sort of guide myself for where I want to add some lightness <laughs> you held your paper the wrong way? Come on, bro. I think I, I, think I even mentioned that to you, big guy. Listen, I know it's a fun game to ignore Mr. B. Uh, some people really enjoy it. They play it at a high level, but uh, you ignore him at your own folly. If you were not paying attention, I, I just use a little bit of the eraser on the back of my pencil. And even though I have a small eraser on this, uh, you can still get this with a nice new eraser on um, one of your regular pencils. And the edge of that can come in to kind of make some of those dark, help you make some of those dark streaks in the, um, in the glass over here. So like if you're in a situation where you may put down a little bit too much white in some spots and you kind of lost a little bit of some of the black streaks in there, um, that's a perfect opportunity to kind of come back in and use um, the eraser, the edge of the eraser, to kind of erase some dark black streaks back into the glass. And continue playing along with this and um, sort of adding to it. I got a different request for a different drawing. Oh no! Oh no! Oh no! You lost, I lost you. Lost you all. For anybody who is actually paying attention, I'm, I'm really sorry. I hope you guys can still hear me. Is anybody still out there? Anybody at all? I'm still here. All right, all right. We still have people out there. All right, so as long as there's still people, there will still be art. We can still have art. I'm going to continue on over there. Hold on a second, my man. What are you doing? I need more paper. Just flip this thing over. Like, dude, why do you do that much? Just erase it. A lot of it's going to be covered up with erasing. Well, listen, if you turn it, you can erase it. Why do I have to cover the void? You can't even see it. And it came to the watch and go on every day. But if you want to, you can see it and go on the phone.
Who's that yelling from the peanut gallery back there?
I think the thing to understand from doing the glass is that, listen, no one's ever going to know if all of these little scribbles and everything else like that are accurate to the photograph. Um, and it won't really matter if they're accurate to the photograph in the grand scheme of things because you're not going to show this thing with the photograph next to it. Now, I'll know it and you'll know it if it isn't. Uh, but the important thing is, is to base the marks that you're making off of the true story. So finding some big parts to sort of key off on and like the distortion of the glass and if there's a little bit more static and craziness happening over here and a couple little high points and bright spots that's um, the important thing to get across and then the other part of it is then you really just kind of ad-libbing a little bit and you know some of that is just going to be with um, making some little erratic little lines but the erratic little lines that I'm doing even though that they're made up I'm still making them up looking at what's happening on the actual picture and you know a few more of those a little bit brighter in the areas that's brighter in the picture and a few less of them in the areas that are darker and remembering that we can use um, our eraser to sort of erase back in some of those little dark stripes and dark values even just the edge of a large pencil eraser will get the job done and then keying off of some of those high points uh, if you can pick up enough of those things in the picture, it'll really start to get um, the feeling of being a glass and being able to see through it. Uh, a couple things that are important to pick up are these little marks over here in the back because that kind of speaks to the um, see-through other edge and the distortion that you get through the glass. And then you know, some of these other things, again, I, I'm not exactly accurate to them to the photograph, but I am sort of picking up on places that are a little bit brighter place is a little bit darker. Now, you know, I've been working on this now for, I don't know, 20, 25 minutes, and you can see how much I've gotten done. I would be a surprise if you got more than that done yourself. Um, if you are getting more than that done, I would say you're probably going through that thing a little bit too quickly, and you should get back in there and um, look for a little bit more detail. Again, the other things that you want to keep in mind also are Sometimes you want things to be very blended with the background. Other times you want to leave them intentionally streaky. And that streakiness from the blending, you can, you can kind of accentuate and help you um, pick up some more of the, I guess, the sort of action and reaction that's going on uh, with the light bouncing off the glass. And with something as complicated as this, um, more lines the better. You can always come back as I look at it. I, I see moments where I'm like, okay, I think I need a little bit more right in here or here and here and I can just add more. The more you have, the more realistic it's going to ultimately appear to be. Right, I hope that that was helpful.